so we are back with Blender. In this tutorial, we will learn about the render and the output settings. Let us make use of this scene where we have already added multiple objects. Let us quickly go to the camera view, and also turn on the rendered view mode. So, this is how our scene looks like. Let us now go to the Render Properties tab. At the very top, we see an option to select the render engine. By default EV is selected. EV is a very nice engine that can quickly render a scene, but it is not very accurate. Unless we need 100% accuracy of our lighting, this smart engine is good enough for most of the work. We will look into the other options here, but let us first review the settings in EV. First we have sampling. This defines how many tiles to be used to build one particular frame. Higher the number, better is the output and longer time it takes to render. This value of 64 can be reduced to something like 32 or even 20. That is for the actual rendering. During the preview, 16 is good enough. The option of ambient occlusion can be used where we want the perfect light and shadow in a closed surface, for example within a pipe. But this increases the rendering time heavily. We won't need this for most of the time. Then Bloom is to add glowing effects to our light objects. When turned on, see the nice glow that is created around this blue object. It has an emission shader. So the Bloom effect creates a glow around it. Among the other settings, another important option is Motion Blur. If there are objects running very fast in our scene, this option can add some blur effect making the scene more realistic. No need to use it for slow movements. Then, under the volumetrics, we need to turn on the volumetric lighting option here, if we are using any volume shaders. While using this option, please remember to check the start and the end distances. If your volume lights are not visible, most of the time it is because of a low value in the end field, so increase this. Then under the shadows section, we have a cube size field that defines the quality of the shadow. Higher values give us better shadow at the cost of higher render time. High bit depth also increases the quality of the shadow, but it is again resource heavy. This soft shadow option helps us to avoid the banding issues near the border of the shadow. The light threshold value removes those light sources that have lower strength. If a light source in your scene is not really creating any light, check if you have accidentally increased this value. Let us close this. Then the simplify option can reduce the render time, as it uses less number of subdivisions for your mesh objects. It does not compromise with the look of the objects very much, so you can select it for a fairly good result if needed. Let us scroll down to the color management section. Here we have different coloring schemes like filmic, standard and others. You can experiment for various different looks, but in general, filmic is quite good. Then the exposure and the gamma values can be changed in order to increase or decrease the lightness. Now let us check the other render engines. We have Workbench, which is an internal engine for Blender itself. It is primarily used for the preview rendering in the 3D viewport. It is neither very accurate nor very efficient for actual output. The last in the list is Cycles which was also the traditional engine before EV was developed. Cycles works on the concept of light tracing, and it can render very accurate result compared to EV. But it takes huge amount of time, so you can avoid Cycles unless you need very high quality output. This engine has similar settings like EV, with very few differences. One difference is, you can set the device option whether to use CPU or the GPU to reduce the rendering time. Also in Cycles, we have a new section called Light Paths. Here you can change the amount of light tracing used in computing the render output. I strongly suggest you to use EV if you are an average computer user just like me. EV is great. Now let us go to the output settings. First we have the resolution. We can set the size of the video, or we can set a relative percentage of the full window size. We have to then mention the start frame number, and the end frame number, so this controls the length of our video. After that we have the frame rate. We can select 24 or 25 or 30 as we wish. Here we need to give the path where we want to save the output. Now in the file format, we can choose FFMPEG for video output. But for better result, we should select a still image format like PNG or TIFF. This creates an image sequence. In the next tutorial, we will convert this image sequence into a video. So see you soon and thanks for watching.